Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is a rice news analyst, Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Robert. Good, Good morning, morning Rufai. Rufai. Yes, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story, Tinubu begins team building, considers Bajabia Miller, chief of staff. Wali Edun Bagudo, also high, uh, also in high consideration for key roles. Shoinka advises president-elect to either restructure Nigeria or fail, insists nation won't cease demanding change. Yes, team building, I remember team ship. Yes, Tinubu, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president-elect, yes, putting together his team. Um, Bajabia Mila, Femi Bajabia Mila, the speaker of the House of Representatives, has been penciled down, according to this report, for the position of chief of staff. Yes, perhaps there are other names that have been in the mix, maybe for other reasons. Recall that um, um, the Minister of Works, um, Babatunde Fashola, uh, served as Tenable's chief of staff when he was governor, perhaps with his experience at the presidential level, at the uh, yeah, at the presidential level, at the executive level, at the federal level, uh, perhaps he will have fit that bill. But the name being mentioned is Femi Bajabia Mila. Recall, may your loyalty never be tested. That famous uh, statement from Fashola, uh, perhaps that put in some distance. But it's somebody who also should have a role in the Tinubu administration, uh, because not only has he been at the center for a long time, eight years, almost eight years now. Uh, he also played a key role in the um, election. Remember him sitting behind a computer uh, like um, some boys. But of course, uh, he played a key role in the Tinubu campaign. So if, if he's not uh, one of those listed to be considered, I'm sure Fashola himself will be considered for other key roles. And of course, we have Wale Edu, uh, former Commissioner of Finance in Lagos State, under the Tinubu administration then. Uh, also, penciled down, Atiku Bagudu, the governor of Kebi State, also penciled down. In the days ahead, members, uh, those who will make the Tinubu uh, team, uh, will, be, will be known to Nigerians. Of course, we don't expect any go slow or baba go slow in the picking of ministers this time around because everybody including Tinubu, uh, the president elect is aware that nigerians are in a hurry to fix many of the uh, ills and uh, uh, problems in the nation's economy and polity in general so of course the nobel laureate Wale professor Wale Shenka, reminded the president-elect about restructuring an item that has been permanent on the APC campaign in 2015, of course, ahead of 2019, but nothing happened. Will Bola Ahmed Tinubu be able to do it? Or he will just caress and romance the subject as he coast along uh, as president. Now, let's look at other newspapers. The Daily Sun newspaper, yes, governors, EFCC, CBN, to meet over security votes. Of course, that meeting is the, the instance of the DG of the Nigerian Financial uh, Intelligence Unit, uh, Modibo Haman Tuko, uh, summoned that meeting. And of course, it will include governors of the 36 states of the Federation, EFCC, ICPC, CBN, and the uh, Federal Inland Revenue Service. Of course, the meeting, amongst other issues, will be dealing uh, with issues, ironing out thorny issues surrounding uh, their state security votes towards establishing a better option of management of the fund. Of course, bring we know so much or uh, no little about how security votes are spent in the in the various states. Now, the Punch newspaper. End of tenure, Buhari Oshibaju, 28 governors, ministers, to begin, to begin 
asset declaration, outgoing public officers, uh, public office holders must declare assets by May 29. The Code of Conduct Bureau of Fish and a Code of Conduct of official is making that statement. President elect Tinubu Shatima, 28 incoming governors get CCB phone this month. Yes, asset declaration, a very key aspect of public office. How well we do this uh, will is left to be seen. But of course, all incoming uh, governors and other public officers will get the CCB form to declare their assets before they, uh, they start their tenure in office, as it were. Now, the Guardian newspaper will be leaked phone call, which Oyedepo raises dust. Leaked audio on Obi Oyedepo, deep fake, says Labour campaign. Okonkwo audio taken out of contest. Obi spokesman blames NCC for leaked call. I have never campaigned for any politician, says Oyedepo. Namani Obi introduced religious ethnic politics. Of course, this uh, video that has been trending over the weekend um, is um, something that has raised some dust, really. Uh, and other newspapers are also reporting this story. The Nigerian Tribune leaked phone uh, talk between Obi Oyedepo causes furore. And while the Daily Trust reporting this story ripples over obese religious war phone conversation with Oyedepo. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper uh, also reporting a different story, alleged non-recognition. E-voting innovator slams 77.5 billion Naira suit on INEC federal government, accuses commission of suppressing information on e-voting proposal. We'll see how that pans out now. The Daily Independent newspaper, banking fears heightened as customers shown cash deposit. Of course, in the wake of the cash crunch that so many Nigerians buying the Naira, unable to access their funds in the bank, now that the things are easing up, many are not very excited to go and deposit money in the bank. Well, you wouldn't blame them. In the light of what Nigerians have gone through, the banks, and of course, the CBN, they will have to earn the trust of Nigerians one more time. Now, the business day newspaper, losers, Trump gainers in Nigeria's Naira redesign. Fintechs gain as CBN banks customers lose. Of course, the banks, uh, like we saw in the earlier report from the Daily Independence, of course, they've, they are also losing because many are not depositing money anymore for now. But the fintechs have become uh, what well, the new bride as they stepped in big time when banks' uh, facilities were failing. And the number of these fintechs are smiling to the bank as it were. Now, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Now, the Abuja Inquirer, FCTA sends back 217 beggars to Casina, 10 other states. Officials say banditry fuel street begging in Abuja. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly. The Times of London, child abuse gang fed by political correctness. Yes, Sunak announces tax force to target grooming. Yes, the British Prime Minister will form a tax force uh, led by the National Crime Agency with data analysis used to help police to identify the types of criminals who carry out this uh, sexual exploitation of children. Uh, Sunak will, he will be making a statement today where he will say that political correctness has fueled the sexual exploitation of children uh, as help. Uh, take, as he takes steps to stamp out this evil. Special officers will be sent to help the police, according to the Guardian report. Now, the Financial Times is reporting OPEC members in surprise oil output cut of more than 1 million barrels per day. Ruben and Rafai. Okay, I, I wanted to start with uh, 
something else, which I think I saw in one of the uh, papers. And that's the story about the musician, <coughs> Portable, who resisted police arrest, who was accused of assaulting a policeman, and who, when we discussed the subject, don't know what's trending, was shown in a video saying, I'm a baboon, I belong to the zoo, the zoo. Well, over the weekend, the police uh, finally arrested him. And the point that was made by Ulumuiwa Adejobi is that no, the police commissioner. By, by the police uh, force, uh, PR, oh, PR. <clears throat> is that musicians don't enjoy constitutional immunity and that nobody is bigger than the law. And we're told that Portable, uh, Okikiola, that's his name, has now been arrested by the police. And it's important for artists, for citizens, to know that the fact that you, are, you have a celebrity status does not confer any special advantage on you. Because in that video, he was saying, I'm a celebrity, I'm a government uh, liability, and we laughed over it. But when we discuss, you know, the U.S. Uh, charging, indicting um, Donald Trump, okay, former president, we say, but it applies just all the way uh, down the line. The second uh, major issue which we have also discussed, which we also brought up, is the case of uh, the leaked uh, telephone conversation between the uh, presidential candidate of the Labour Party and the, you know, uh, the father uh, in the Lord of the uh, Winners uh, Chapel, uh, Bishop David Oyedepo. One of the things that remains that will remain to be done will be, since the Labour Party, some spokespersons for the Labour Party insist that they know the persons who leaked the uh, the audio, right? The thing to do, if they know those persons, is in fact to commence legal action against them. Because it is your right to privacy of memos, of correspondence, of your house, of telephone conversation, is a fundamental right, guaranteed not just in the uh, Constitution. Other laws, subsidiary laws, even the Child Rights Act, even uh, uh, Section 14 of the Freedom of Information Act of, uh, of uh, 2015, even uh, you know, consumer protection uh, legislation, and even the guidelines on data protection and privacy in Nigeria, you know, protect you from your conversation from being leaked. The only circumstance in which your conversation can be, uh, you know, uh, made available, it will be under a legal proceeding, and there will be a, a proper application. But for somebody to just take your telephone conversation and be... Uh, distributing it all over the place, whether it is doctored or not, once the intent is to embarrass you and expose you to ridicule in the eyes of right-thinking members of society, then, of course, you can act. And I think that, you know, uh, Mr. Peter B should not shy away from, uh, you know, taking action against those persons who may have leaked the uh, conversation if he knows them. Because one of his spokespersons has said, oh, maybe there's a conspiracy of the Nigerian Communications Commission in this regard. So that's why the matter should be investigated. Because if uh, telephone conversations are routinely leaked, you will blow up the country. Huh? There are some conversations you have on phone. It may not be something political or religious. There are certain uh, conversations that uh, able-bodied men <laughs> have on phone that could, uh, that could cause crisis. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why everybody. Ruben, you are, you are, you are very, you are very interested in this protection of this right. <laughs> it sounds funny, but that's, no, but how, that's how it goes. That, that's how that's much of a threat yeah, yeah. it could become to society. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, very well said, uh, Dr. Abati. And like I said before concerning this, I think a total forensic examination should be done uh, as regards, you know, the conversation and everything that happened. Like I said before, prior to this time, it's political season. You will have a lot of AI manipulated doctored materials and all of that. People will cut conversation to suit their purpose. And that's why I said in the forensic examination, there should be a check for voice distortions. You know, people would be able to cut and paste and things like that and all of that, like the allegation the Labour Party made. But the APC is saying otherwise that, oh, it's a reflection of who the person is, blah, 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 and all of that. But I think to a very large extent, 
The right to private conversations is enshrined in our constitution, section 37. And OB is actually and, accusing the APC yes, of and being is behind the this. APC. And that's why at this point in time, we need you know, more investigators, forensic investigators, to be able to ascertain, and like Dr. Sabat said, probably put a legal you know, uh, conversation as regards that. Because if people are not nipped in the bud, it will only continue. Yeah. And because there's a reason why it continues, because people say, oh, after the person apologizes and say, oh, yo, let's not blow this out of proportion. But it doesn't stop the fact that the person did do it and anybody that is in this case. But I don't know the full details of this case, so I cannot comment. And, you know, those proof, or those claims by the Labour Party will only be asserted when they have an independent forensic, you know, examination report that is released and they point out all what happened, which can be done by forensic independent experts. Another story I would like to talk about, I'm sorry for doing vain glory, is the fact that Graham Potter, Chelsea coach, has been sacked. Uh, I am very happy about that this morning. You're yeah, a Chelsea fan? Yes. <laughs> I have become a long-suffering Chelsea fan as but a result Did you of, suffer like Arsenal fans over the years? You see, uh, there's a difference between... Arsenal fans are just Arsenal fans were perennial sufferers. They knew they were going to suffer every year. But how do you explain for a person that is known to finishing top four, now languishing at tent on the table, now having Aston Villa beating two 0 over the weekend at Stamford Bridge? At Stamford Bridge, that's the height of humiliation and suffering. <laughs> so I'm happy that Todd Bowley has finally taken the shame of us Chelsea fans. But it behoves on them to be able to get a new sound coach because you can't spend over 600 million pounds on players and you are suffering the kind of humiliation. It's a national crisis, honestly. But moving on from that, another story making the grounds on the foreign scene is this Dover incident. Swella so, Breverman has been trying to defend herself and saying it's not because of the Brexit laws and checks. That's why you have a big backlog in Dover. She's even blamed weather and all of that. But people are saying it's because of those laws. And that's why we keep asking, you know, people, especially uh, Mr. Michael Wilson, that what deal did Rishi Sunak claim he got as regards this Irish backstop deal that they said they have a new deal? Because all of it is just putting regulations in place to be able to create a buffer to the ill-thought-out, ill-planned, ill-executed Brexit that started many years ago after the politicians misled people to vote and they triggered Article 50. And the UK is reeling from it now. You want to compare the economy now with when they were in EU? Only time will tell. So I think across board, on other fronts, the politicians have to come out and be accountable. So Ella Breverman has been in the eye of the storm a lot, but she needs to be accountable as regards what is happening in Dover because the backlog are intense. Well, uh, the official explanation by Suela Bravama and, uh, you know, government is that this has nothing to do with Brexit. So there's a controversy, whether it's Brexit oh. or not. Yeah. And, uh, okay, benefits Bravama, and that's how one people <laughs> describe yes. her. You know, what she is insisting upon is that this is as a result of the Easter holiday rush. Uh, but Easter holiday rush, you have about 15,000, you know, uh, persons waiting on the queue for hours on end, but you know, two sides uh, to that uh, story. Yeah, maybe it's too early to talk about uh, the, the gains and or the lack of it of Brexit. Ah, no, it's not too early <laughs> because they promised. The gains may just be there. No, they the road. promised mm. that in recent time after Brexit, they were going to have what they call Singapore on terms. Oh, the economy was going to be open like Singapore. Well, there are you two, know, there, there were possibilities and yeah. all of yeah. that. But all the people that said that, they've been interviewed recently, and we all see what they say. They said yeah. they didn't know it was going to be this high. Anyway, it's a dangerous story. Much, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah.